Welcome everyone to another Kirby Cast. Today we are going to look into caching. Out of the box Kirby is super fast and you probably don't really need to look into this for quite a while until you get to the point when you work with a lot of pages or complex contents that you might collect from different parts of your site and things might not always be super snappy. So if you get to that point, you want to look into how to cache things, how to cache certain pages. And this is exactly what we are going to do today. I've set up the starter kit just as an Good, uh, as a good starting point as, as an example for this demo video. And let's just start by activating our file cache. I've already opened up the config file. Just as a recap, you can find it in your site folder in the config, config folder and there it is. If it isn't there, just create it and start from here. As you can see, uh, out of the box, this comes with the debug mode enabled. Um, you can leave this on while you're working on it. Um, on your local machine, you definitely need to switch it off if it is in production. But now we are going to add another config rule to this. And this is the cache rule. And it looks like this. It is a, a, an array of multiple cache options. So you have various options here. And if you want to go into more detail, you can look this up in our reference. What we are going to do now is we are going to activate our pages cache. And we can simply do this by using the pages keyword here and then set it to true. Set it to false and it will be disabled just as it comes out of the box. So now it should be enabled and what happens now is when we go back to the site and we start navigating around, we will not really realize a lot because this is local it's super fast anyway um, but if we go back to the finder and we move here to the cache folder you will see that kirby created this cachey test this is my domain just for this demo so the domain will be used as a subfolder here and then in here we will find our cache for the um, unique ids this is on by default. And then we will also find the new pages subfolder now, which is now being filled up slowly as we move around. So the cache works in a way that it is being created on demand. When a visitor visits a page that has not been cached yet, it will be cached for the first time. So that first initial load might be a a little, uh, a little bit slower, but afterwards it's written to such a cache file and then from there on every other visit will be super quick. So let's just move around a bit more and we can see how our cache folder should um, be filled more and more with more cache files. So Kirby will use the same um, structure, the same basic structure that you have in your content folder or that you have in your URLs to create those cache files. So it will create folders and subfolders and sub subfolders and so on. Great, so it's working out of the box and this is really nice. And now we can have a look at how this cache has been invalidated because that's an important part of it. Um, as soon as we start editing content. Now this page, for example, is in the cache now and it's loaded from the cache. But what happens if we edit it? Let's go to the panel and to this trees page. And let's just change the title quickly, just as an example. And what the panel does for you is it will automatically flush the cache. So if we move back here, you can see that the title has been changed. And again, a new cache file should have been created here. Exactly. And as you, as you have seen before, um, we had a lot of cache files before that, but now it's only one. This means Kirby flushed the entire cache for you when you make changes in the panel. And it does this pretty aggressively. It just rips out all those files that you have in there. And then if you move around again, you will those files will be recreated. The idea behind that is that ch such changes could be used in multiple places on your site. So for example, with this tree headline here on this tree title, um, it's not just on this page, but if we go to the photography page, for, for example, it's also here. So um, 
it would be super complex to look in all the different parts where this certain kind of data is needed. So instead, it will just flush the entire cache for you. Just make to make sure that everything is fresh for you in that in that case. But since all those pages are just created or the, the caches for those pages are just created on demand, it's no big deal and it's really easy to do this. Let's have a look at the additional settings that we can make here because we don't just have the files cache, we have different types of caches as well, cache engines. Files is the default, so if you just set it to true, it will use the files cache by default, it will create those cache files that we've seen on the disk, but you could also switch this to APCU, or you could switch this to memcache, or you can even come with your own cache drivers or load one of the plugins that we have for Redis, for example. So those are different cache engines that will have additional benefits by being a little bit faster, for example, depending on the system. Um, but out of the box, the files cache is the most easiest to set up and also pretty, pretty fast by default. Let's leave this as the as file as the file cache. And the next important thing that I want to show you is how to ignore certain pages from the cache. To give you an example why this is important, um, let's set up an, a, dy a, dy uh, a dynamic part on our website. For example, on the home page, we have those featured photography um, pages here. And what I want to do now is to have a random sorting order for those with every new visit. And this is what we are going to do first. Well, let's disable the cache pretty quickly again by just uncommenting those lines. Now it's not it's not cached. And what I want to do now is go to the template of the home page. And as you can see here, this is where we get all those photography pages, sub pages to create this grid of really nice um, photography projects. And I'm just going to add a shuffle method here, which will now take this collection of pages and just shuffle it around with every new visit. And the effect looks like this. So you can see whenever I reload, this is going to be dynamic and the order is always going to change. This is a nice effect that I want to keep and I don't want this to end up in the cache because what would happen then is it would just save the, the current, the latest order that someone came to here and then it would store this for all other visitors as well. So this is not really ideal in this case. What can we do? Let's go back to the config, activate this again and let's just have a look at what this does. So now if I go here and I reload, you can see it writes that last order into the cache file and from there on it will just keep bringing this up until I make changes, for example, in the content. But this is not really dynamic anymore. And it's a bit of a shame. What we can do here is to add an ignore rule. And the ignore rule is a simple function. And the function gets the current page as argument. And if we just return false here, uh, just return true here, which would mean ignore whatever page comes along. Um, this would basically be the same as deactivating the cache. So now our effect should be back exactly. So the sorting order is yeah, changing with every visit again. And this is again, not really what we want. What we want is to decide based on the current page, if it should be ignored or not. What we can do now is for our homepage, for example, use the is homepage method. Oops. This is just a built in page method, which tells me, okay, this is the homepage or it's not the homepage and it will return true or false. And so we can instantly use this to say, if this is the homepage, then please ignore this from the cache. And if it's not the homepage, then please don't ignore it from the cache. So this should now um, have the same result. It should keep our shuffle alive and well, exactly. 
while it still caches all the other pages. So if we look back into our cache folder, the other ones should still be cached exactly. And if we remove this, because this is now um, from the last time we visited it, when it was not ignored yet, and we go back to the home page, this should no longer create a cache file exactly. So it does what we want here. And we could now have custom ignore rules based on other um, page methods, for example. So a typical one would be the slug. Let's just say we want to ignore our photography page. Then we could do this, or we could have an array of slugs that we want to ignore. Or we could even create custom fields that would then switch off caching for those pages. And let's just try that. My custom field, let's, what, what would be a good name? Uh, skip cache or ignore cache is true. So what I'm doing with this here is I'm pretending that there can be a field called ignore cache. And whenever this is true, the field is true, um, then the cache will be ignored. To show that this is working, let's move to the content folder and to the home page. And let's just create that field. Ignore cache true. Now we should get the same exact result that we just did before by using the is home page method. Exactly, our shuffle is still working. The other pages should still be cached as expected. And now we have a really flexible field or rule that we can use for other pages as well. So for example, if we want to put it in here, we can just use it here as well. And then this page would also be um, ignored. And if we combine that with a with a blueprint setting and we add a toggle field, for example, to our panel, then we could even switch this on and off in the panel, which is quite, quite nice and handy. So it's really flexible for you to extend this, use those ignore functions or this ignore function for the cache settings to yeah, have really complex um, ignore settings or pretty simple ones. It de depends on your project. One important last part that I want to talk about um, when it comes to caching is the panel cleans up for you, which is nice and works out of the box. But um, whenever we make changes to the templates or when we make changes to the config or when we make changes to the content, then uh, manually, as I just did in, in the content folder, those changes are not causing the cache to be flushed. So for example, if I go in here now and I switch this back to trees and I go to my trees, whoops, my mouse is gone. Ah, here it is. If I go to the trees, you can see it still has the tree from the cache because the panel can do this actively, but whenever we make changes on the disk, this is not causing the, the cache to be invalidated. We have to do this by hand, which is not a big deal, but you just have to keep it in mind. Otherwise, you might run into situations where you just forget about it and you wonder why it's not, why isn't this changing? Is there something broken about it? If I go to the side folder, all I have to do now to clean the cache is to remove this folder. That's all I have to do when I use the file cache. If I use a different cache engine, I have to flush the cache there in a different way. But I can th throw this away now. Um, I could also only just throw away the pages folder, which might be a good idea if you have a lot of unique IDs already cached. So that's actually the better choice. I'm throwing this away. As soon as I start moving around again, you will see that the folder appears again and the cache files are recreated. This is a really easy way to trigger this, to make sure that the cache is empty, that no unwanted side effects appear here and that the content is, is fresh. And you can see now the title has been updated and everything is as expected. There is even one more thing that I want to talk about and that is caching depending on your environment. For example, 
when you work on your local machine, you probably don't really want to have caching enabled because then whenever you make changes to templates or you make changes manually on the content as we just did, you would have to remember this step. And while you are working on your projects, this might be pretty, pretty annoying quickly. What we can do here is we can make use of our custom um, environment configs. I've been talking about this in another video, but I'm quickly going to recap this here just to show you how easy it is to set this up. So in Kirby we can have multiple config files um, and we can bind them to a certain to a domain. So they will only be loaded when a certain domain is being used for your project. In this case I have my main config and this will always be loaded and in my main config I have my cache settings. And now I want to make sure that on my local domain on cache.test those um, cache settings are deactivated. So I can duplicate my config file and now what I'm doing is I'm adding a, a dot and then I'm adding the domain and this will automatically automatically uh, automatically create a environment specific config file for this domain if i edit this one in the editor and i disable my page cache here i can ignore this one because it will be merged with the other one so i don't have to repeat all the config settings um, that i have in my main config i can leave them um, out of this one and only specify the things that are different from what are from what is in the main config so i'm disabling the pages cache in this one and now on my local setup here nothing should be cached let's make sure that this actually works by removing the pages folder again and while i navigate around I move back to the cache, I can see nothing is cached. This is really, really handy because now when I deploy this, when I upload this via FTP or I have a proper deployment setup, uh, I can just keep this in here. Um, and on my production environment, on the final domain, this one, this one will kick in, caching will be enabled. But whenever I work locally on my cache.test domain, um, caching will be disabled. This is also a really great way to make sure that debug mode is not on um, in production, which means I can remove this from here and move it to here. And so debug will on, only be on on my local domain, but not on, in production. I can also turn this around. If this works better for your mental model, you could have the default settings um, you could switch off caching by default in the main config and then switch it on in your production domain config. So you could add the production domain here and then switch it on in there. It doesn't really matter. So it, it's just what works best for you, for your mental model. Do you want to switch stuff on or do you want to switch stuff off? It sometimes depends on what is just clearer for you in terms of the setup that you're using. You can also, if you're working in a team, if you're working with something like Git, you could ignore this so the other teammates don't have to worry about this at all. It's, it really, it's just a thing that is really helpful for you to have custom setups depending on different environments. This is it about caching. Uh, I think the cache in Kirby is really powerful. We just touched on the basics here in this video. If you want to learn more about it, go to our guide, go to our reference. Also have a, have a look at the static cache plugin, which is a really great way to give you proper static um, site performance, which you can then still combine with this ignore rules and have dynamic parts, but also have static parts. So there are a lot of things that you can do with caching in Kirby. Um, to speed up your site if it is getting slower. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time. Bye bye.